from a Catholic saint who underwent a transformation to escape the Protestant Reformation to the personification of Christmas commercialism itself, Santa Claus has evolved greatly through tragedy and triumph. Santa Claus is the most famous and beloved person in the world. One way or another, you've heard of him. To celebrate Christmas, you know him. Even if you don't, you still probably heard of him. And if you celebrate Christmas without the religious aspects, like me, because you're not Christian, then Santa Claus coming down your chimney was all that your three-year-old self thought you used to think Christmas was all about. I mean, whenever you saw Santa someplace, you were like, Okay, let me clarify something. We're talking about the concept and idea of Santa Claus, not the man himself. We're talking about who designed his suit and how he came to be in design-wise, not the man's life biography. To understand the concept of Santa Claus, we need to go back to the 3rd and 4th centuries AD. This is the time period of Santa's ancestor, Saint, currently Bishop, Nicholas of Myra. He is the patron saint of children, sailors, and more. Unlike the stories of Santa Claus, the stories of Saint Nicholas are, well, dark. All of the stories about him are dark. Even the origin of stockings is dark. The origins of stockings and the gift-giving tradition this occurred when a man wanted to marry off his three daughters. Problem? He was too poor to pay a dowry. You see, kids, the trend for old people back then who had sons was to get paid to marry off their sons to girls. The people who paid were the girls' parents. That's what a dowry was. The poor man had no choice but to sell his eldest daughter into slavery. St. Nicholas came to hear about this and decided to take action. Like most rich people, St. Nicholas inherited a huge amount of wealth from his dead parents. Nicholas went discreetly to the poor man's house and tossed a bag of gold through the window into the eldest daughter's stocking sock. This happened two times, one for each daughter. The poor man became suspicious. The third time St. Nicholas came, he hid. When St. Nicholas began to leave, he got caught. The man thanked him, but Nicholas pleaded with the man not to tell anyone what happened. This story laid the backbone of the mythology of Santa. Santa's ancestors supposedly made miracle too. He saved a ship from sinking, resurrected three boys who were murdered, prevented people from being wrongfully executed, and more. You could say he was an ancient superhero. Even after his death on December 6, 343 AD, St. Nicholas was popular. In fact, he became a gift giver mainly after his death. On his death anniversary, he would come down to earth to give gifts to children. However, this won't last. This leads us to our first tragedy, the Protestant Reformation. During this religious movement, Saint, the practice of revering St. Nicholas at Christmas time, in some places St. Nick gave gifts on Christmas till the fact it was close to his feast day, was banned. St. Nicholas was replaced by Christkindl, a religious figure that's basically a more commercialized version of the baby slash child Yeshua ben Nazareth, or Jesus Christ. It also it happens to be represented as a female angel. Fortunately, St. Nicholas's descendants had much better luck. 
Saint Nicholas passed on his legacy to multiple gift givers. Their advantage was that while some had religious significance, they were commercialized enough that they didn't take away the meaning of Christmas. The three gift givers that were directly based off of Saint Nicholas are Sinterklaas, Grandfather Frost, and the future Santa Claus, who at the time served as local gift givers for different countries. For example, Father Christmas for the UK, Père Noël for France, and Wayne Nachtman for Germany, even though Christ Kindle was more popular there at the time. The three gift givers all have aspects from mythological heroes and pagan gods, like the Norse god Odin. They all have longer beards and are more secular than the original Saint Nicholas. Now, with all that out of the way, let's talk about the creation of the Santa Claus we know and love. After a decade after the end of the Revolutionary War, there was a surge in immigration. Dutch immigrants brought Santa Claus with them to the U.S. Americans altered the name a couple of times until they stuck with Santa Claus and changed his appearance a lot. This is basically what happened. Santa Claus? What kind of garbage is this? Forget it! Oh, I got it! Santa Claus? Forget this! Santa's the new hot gift giver in town. A man named Clement Clark Moore wrote a poem titled A Visit from St. Nicholas. This gave Santa his eight reindeer and his, um, obesity. The poem would later be known as The Night Before Christmas. A couple of decades later, a man named Thomas Nast drew this, one of the most famous and definitive pictures of Santa Claus. Santa Claus was a cool dude in the 20th century. He's been in tons of literature, like an article known as Yes, Virginia. The article was written by a man named Francis Farsalis Church and published by a newspaper called The New York Sun. It was a response to a letter written by a girl named Virginia O'Hamlin asking if Santa exists. The phrase, Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, is one of the oldest Christmas memes, probably second only to Bah Humbug. Remember Father Christmas and all the other gift givers I mentioned? Well, during World War I and II, Santa traveled with U.S. troops, and he soon merged with Father Christmas, Wayne Notchman, and other gift givers. That's how Santa went global. An example of how Santa can create industries is how the Santa Claus Village came to be. In the 1920s, a man named Marcus Rachio declared on a children's radio show that Santa Claus lived on Korva Tanturi, a mountain in the province of Lapland in Finland. This would start the Santa industry. After World War II, Rovaniemi was rebuilding for a couple of decades. Rovaniemi is the, said to be the gateway to Lapland. The Santa Claus village was built to boost tourism there. There's a legit post office there run by the Postal Service. It receives millions of letters from around the world. This is a highly recommended place to go to. Sometimes, the same traditions get boring. That's why you spice things up. Santa trackers are the spice in this case. The oldest one, Norad Track Santa, started when a Sears uh, in uh, Colorado printed out a number for kids to call Santa. The number got misprinted and kids called a military base instead. Colonel Harry Shope that told kids that they were tracking Santa. Thus, the first Santa Tracker was born. This concludes the end of my documentary. I hope you enjoyed it.
Oh my god! 